When it comes to sport compact cars, the Toyota Corolla nameplate hasn't really gotten much love from enthusiasts over the last few decades. I mean, sure, Toyota did a really hot Corolla back in the 1980s. They tried to do it again in the mid 2000 eras with that high revving Corolla XRS. But sadly, we haven't seen a really fun Corolla for a long time, but that was then, this is now. And as you can see this week, Toyota has loaned me the hottest Corolla that they've ever made. This is the 2023 GR Corolla, of course, built by the fantastic team at Gazoo Racing. This particular one here is the Circuit Edition. It sits comfortably in the middle of the Corolla, the GR Corolla family. And under the hood, you're going to find a high strung 300 horsepower turbocharged three cylinder, an all new rally car style all wheel drive system, and a six speed manual transmission, the only transmission that you can get on the GR Corolla. So, the big question I want answered if you guys have been waiting a long time for Toyota to finally give us a hot hatch Corolla, was the 2023 GR Corolla worth the wait? Stay tuned to find out. All right, guys, so we finally have the 2023 GR Corolla in our possession for a full week. And before I show you guys the full tour on the exterior, I thought I'd remind you what's going on underneath the hood because this is the Gazoo Racing Corolla. It means it has something super special under the hood, a turbocharged three cylinder engine. Now, this engine has been seen under the hood of the GR Yaris and other markets for a couple years. However, Toyota decided to finally give us this forbidden fruit here in America, but they put it in a Corolla because we Americans, we tend to like bigger cars. And under the hood of this vehicle, this 1.6 liter turbo direct injection three cylinder has a turbo that is pumping in up to 25.2 pounds of boost pressure. That's because this is the circuit edition. The core, which is the base model, has the same boot, a boost pressure. If you guys go for the Marizo edition, Toyota cranks the boost up to 26.3 PSI. Now the numbers, 300 horsepower, which means this thing makes 100 horsepower per cylinder, which is kind of cool to think about. And you also got 273 pound feet of torque. Now, if you guys go for the Marizo edition with that extra boost, it actually pumps the torque output to 295 pound feet, which again, very impressive figures from a 1.6 liter three cylinder engine. You only get one transmission, a six speed manual transmission. This circuit edition also includes front and rear limited slip differentials. It has an all new rally car style all wheel drive system. The first time Toyota has developed a new system in over 20 years, which means it can send up to 70% of the power to the rear, 50-50 if you want, or a 60-40 split. Fuel economy is rated at 21 in the city and 28 on the highway. Premium gas, of course, is going to be uh, required. Uh, and this has around a 13 gallon gas tank. You get around 230-ish miles on a full tank. Now, Toyota says this is good for zero to 60 in 4.9 seconds. We finally have our testing equipment. We'll get it out on the road and see what we can get in the real world. It has a top speed of Get this, 143 miles an hour. That's kind of disappointing. I was expecting it to be higher, but again, this is designed to be a track focused car. And as this car sits, it weighs in at around 3,285 pounds. But let's go ahead and close the hood and talk about the exterior styling. Now, as you guys know, this generation Corolla came out back in 2019, and I was actually a big fan of the styling of this car when it first came out. So on the GR Corolla, they're essentially just pumping it up to give us more of everything, which is necessary given the mission of this car. This particular one here being the circuit edition means you have this unique hood with the functional heat extractors. It's got kind of like a bulging hood. It looks really good in this heavy metal gray exterior exterior, which is exclusive to the circuit edition. You can see there are also full LED headlights. The Corolla got a refresh last year that includes uh, an LED daytime running light, LED low and high beams, LED turn signal, which is also part of the running light. And then down here, you also have LED fog lights. The grill you can see is massive. You do have a lot of functional openings here. There's also a functional opening in the, by the emblem. And then you can see the very large intercooler behind the grill. Uh, that again provides cooling for this engine, which is all necessary. Uh, it even says GR4 there to go back to the rally uh, car history of the brand. You can see it also says GR in the front. There are some more vents over here. Uh, and most of the vents that you're seeing are functional. But overall, let me know what you guys think of the design. I love how this car looks. I mean, it reminds me a lot of the old Type R with its kind of boy racer looks. But for those of you who think the current Type R is too big, this is going to be a lot of a, a much more smaller 
manageable hot hatch. Now you can see it's built off of the TNGA architecture, just like the regular Corolla, but everything has been kind of stiffened up. Its overall length is 173.6 inches long, which means it's about seven inches shorter than the current Type R. Its wheelbase is also 103.4 or 103.9 inches. You can see the wheels. Um, this circuit edition includes this 15 spoke uh, uh, black painted or satin black painted wheel. It's an 18 inch wheel wrapped in a 23540 uh, 40 ZR R18 Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tire. Keep in mind, if you guys go for the Marizo edition, it has a 245 on a, a Pilot Sport Cup 2R compound tire. So even stickier, wider tires. You can see the brakes are 14 inches in the front. They are slotted rotors. You got four piston red painted calipers. That's standard on the circuit edition, optional on the core. And then in case you're wondering, this car has about 5.3 inches of ground clearance. So not a lot. You're not gonna be going off-roading, but you could go rallying with this car as long as you're on like a dirt road without you know, some off-road you know, that requires off-road ground clearance. Now you can see over here, you have a functional vent again, which is nice. There's another GR badge over here. You can see black painted side mirror with integrated turn signals, which is nice. And then the circuit edition includes this carbon fiber reinforced hood or roof, I'm sorry. That is supposedly supposed to reduce the weight by just a couple of ounces, according to Toyota, but it is going to significantly strengthen the car. If you're hoping to find a sunroof, Toyota does not offer a sunroof on the GR Corolla. Now from this angle here, you can really see just how much wider this car is. At 72.8 inches wide, this is almost three inches wider than the regular Corolla, but it's about two inches narrower versus a Civic Type R. So again, this isn't as big as that vehicle. It's about the same size as a Golf R, but it has a much more boy racer standout-ish look to it. You can see, especially here, there are some body panel kits that kind of add to that width because the tires needed that clearance. And you can just see here uh, the look of the rear. Very, very attractive design. I especially like it in this heavy metal exterior color. Toyota technically offers it in white, gray, uh, and red essentially and then there's like another smoke finish gray there's two different forms of gray so you can't get blue i wish toyota would offer this in blue but sadly they don't now looking at the rear you can see the taillights are pretty much the same this is an led style taillight which kind of mimics the design of the front i also noticed that this circuit edition has the actual spoiler that it's supposed to have the early models that i drove a few months ago, like five months ago, some of the circuit editions were missing the wing. This is the wing spoiler that is functional. You get on the circuit edition, the core doesn't have a wing, while the Marizo has a different wing. It looks really good with this heavy metal exterior color. It adds functional downforce, is, that's what Toyota tells us. It also has the rear third brake light. You can see there's also a rear window wiper. There's a GR Corolla badge. And then down here you can see there's the infamous triple exhaust system. Now this car I think sounds good, but it's also a little bit too muted. I suspect owners might uh, take out the silencers out of this exhaust or the mufflers perhaps, but I'll fire it up so you guys can hear what it sounds like real quick. And again, this is definitely no ordinary Corolla. So bravo Toyota for making this thing actually sound pretty special. Now opening up the trunk capacity, you can see there's a little pressure pad underneath there. No power lift gate, obviously, but uh, this is pretty similar to the standard Corolla. You get around 17.6 uh, cubic feet of storage space. There's actually some storage along the sides there. And then if you lift this up, you can see there's also some storage underneath here. And then you can see the battery, the 12 volt battery lives underneath the rear area here. Uh, but sadly, there is no spare tire. Instead, you just get a fix-a-flat kit. If you fold down those seats, uh, I think it expands it to just under, or just over 36 cubic feet of space. So something like the Civic Type R offers about eight to 10 cubic feet more space. But remember, that is also a bigger vehicle. So now let's go ahead and talk about the interior of this 2023 GR Corolla in the Circuit Edition trim. The first thing I wanna show you guys, here is the key fob for the vehicle. You can see it looks pretty much like every other Toyota key. It has just three buttons on it, lock, unlock, and panic. On the back, it does say GR to let you know that you have a vehicle built by the folks at Gazoo Racing. If you have access to the Toyota Connected Services app, you should be able to also remotely access this vehicle to lock and unlock it and ping the car. But as you can see, opening the door, you can, uh, uh, see, my tester with the heavy metal exterior has a black interior. There aren't really much in terms of color combinations, sadly. Um, this model here, of course, has the upgraded Alcantara 
with the soft tex leatherette material uh, here. These seats also have some contrasting red stitching. These are unique to the circuit edition. If you guys go for a core, it only comes with a cloth seat. The Marisa also has its own unique seat. You can see it says GR in the head restraint. There's also uh, holes here for uh, a racing seat belt if you'd like. And then the rest of the door panel you can see here has a soft touch injection molded plastic with some red contrasting stitching. There's some soft tex faux leather on the door panel armrest pad here and then the windows are one touch automatic for all four you just have a six-way manual adjustable driver's seat these seats thankfully are heated along with getting a heated steering wheel that's included with the circuit edition and then you also have of course the prerequisite alloy pedals but uh, getting inside this vehicle has about 5.3 inches of ground clearance so again it has that lower step in height as i get in and shut the door the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. Remember, this is built on the TNGA uh, architecture. But starting the vehicle up, you can see only it comes with a manual transmission. The start stop button is right here, which actually isn't buried by the steering wheel. You can still see around it. And then all GR Corollas will come standard with this fully digital uh, center instrument or this instrument panel display, which is around 12 inches. Uh, this, this gauge display is slightly customizable. You can see there's a traditional tack with a digital speedo. If I start playing with the drive mode here, I can actually go to four different modes. Eco and normal keeps it at that. Go into sport, however, it gives you a tack that is very much like race car inspired. Same thing with custom. You can go into the settings and just leave it on either drive mode cluster if you prefer. I actually like how it changes when you go from sport to normal. It just adds that nice character. There's also an 8-inch Toyota audio multimedia interface here. This has the latest software that includes, as you can see, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The screen itself is small. I mean, this is probably the smallest version of their newest software system, but you can see it works fairly well and my phone connects every time. Uh, you can see there is a soft touch injection molded dash material, which is nice with some faux and genuine stitching. My tester also has the JBL premium sound which is optional on the core it does sound okay it has eight speakers for those of you who get tired of listening to that turbocharged three cylinder but i like how the engine is pretty free revving we'll talk about that later on during the driving scene uh, there are some piano black plastic elements here and then if you go back to the toyota system you can see it does include factory embedded gps which is um uh, relatively easy to use and intuitive, pretty quick responding. Uh, all of your controls are basically over here on the side, but again, small buttons, uh, which make this screen a little bit harder to use. Most of you are gonna just have it on the CarPlay. Anyways, you have single zone automatic climate control, uh, which is nice. You also have a wireless phone charging pad, which you can see barely fits my iPhone 14 Pro Max. It literally just barely fits and it doesn't charge my phone when it's sitting there unless I take it out of the case. You have two level heated seats. You can see high and low. And then your drive mode selector is here. Like I said, there's eco, normal, sport, and custom. And your stability control off switch is right here. When you go into sport mode, you can see it literally turns off everything and goes into an expert mode uh, when you do that. Now the manual transmission you can see has pretty short throws. Uh, it's a little bit on the notchier side. It doesn't love being rushed into th uh, third gear at times and the reverse is uh, engaged by pulling up on that ring. You can see once you go into reverse, the back of camera is very base basic. The graphics aren't great. Uh, there's no trajectory. It doesn't have parking sensors. So it's literally just a backup camera. Remember this is a Corolla. So you should be able to drive a vehicle this small. Uh, down here on the center console, you can see there's more stitching with contrast. There's some plastic trim here. This model is an early pre-production car, but I am pretty impressed with the overall build quality. It's not bad. Down here, you can see you have an electronic or you have a digit, a mechanical pull style handbrake. I'm so used to saying that I keep messing it up. And then you have another drive mode selector here for the all wheel drive system, the GR4. So you can either kick it over to the left that puts it into a 60 40 torque split, twist it to the right. It goes into a 30 70 for a more rear drive bias and then push the center of the dial to go into track. That gives you a perfect 50 50 distribution. So there's two drive modes technically here. And of course here for the all wheel drive system, we'll explore that later on during the driving scene. I hate how the GR Corolla doesn't have an actual armrest here within a center console for storage. So this is literally all the storage that I have. So there's not really much in terms of storage. You do have a USB-C charging and a 12 volt and another USB-C charging outlet over here. And then these seats, I really like them. They are comfortable, supportive, um, I find them to be the perfect width for me, but if you're a little bit wider, you might want to try them out. Make sure you have enough um, room to get comfortable. Headroom space is a little bit on the tighter end uh, because of the roof line, but you don't get a sunroof in this vehicle, uh, so you don't have to worry about that. There is LED map lighting in here, and then if you open up the glove box, you can see it's a bin style. It's pretty big. 
damped. It's damped, but not lined with felt. So overall, the interior is very basic. It's definitely, it definitely reminds you you're in a Corolla. The Civic Type R for sure has a nicer interior, but at least it has a nice digital display here, an eight inch touchscreen here with wireless CarPlay, and you also get a heated steering wheel and heated seats on this circuit edition model. But let's go ahead and hop into the back seat. This is another area where the GR Corolla does lag behind some competitors, uh, but getting back here, you can see the space is tight. You get just under 30 inches of legroom, 29.9 to be exact. Uh, and you also do notice that the opening is pretty small. The door doesn't open very large as well. So if you're trying to sell this to your spouse as a kid car, it can do it, but it can't really do it very well. Back here, you can see hard touch plastic materials with more piano black and a padded armrest area. But getting back here, you can see, whew, this is even tight for somebody my height. Now I actually, I had to duck my head because this right here is a very small opening, but once you get back here, you can see, shut the door. Leg room is fine for somebody my height. I could be fine back here on some shorter trips. There's some good foot space. Big center uh, tunnel here for the middle passenger, uh, which is uh, gonna be tight for somebody sitting here. At least it has a middle seat because the Civic Type R technically only seats four. There is no middle seat. Uh, you have two storage pockets. Like I said earlier, you have one USB charging port, no rear seat air vents. Surprisingly though, there is an armrest that folds down and gives you two cup holders. So wasn't expecting to find that, but again, overall, the back seat of the GR Corolla is probably the weakest link. This is among the smallest in the segment. All right, so finally, we are back in the 2023 Toyota GR Corolla. I was seriously so excited to drive this car last year. However, my brief first drive with it wasn't really much time at all. I was on a closed track. Toy didn't even let us take it out on the actual roads. So now that we have this circuit edition for a full week, I can actually live with the car on a weekly or for, you know, a week and see what it's like to daily drive um, and see if this thing is truly worth the hype. Now this circuit edition model means we have 300 horsepower, 273 pound feet of torque. Uh, Toyota claims it can do zero to 60 in 4.99 seconds. Now I couldn't get close to that time when I first drove that really early pre-production car. This one is also a pre-production car, but it feels a little bit better put together uh, than those earlier ones I was driving. But regardless, I have the car in sports. I have it in GR4 3070. Uh, and let's go ahead and see what we can get on our first run here. I'm gonna do like a 4,000 clutch dump here. That's good. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Zero to 60 in 4.93 seconds. Wow. That is way better than the time I got when I was first driving this car out, I believe in Texas, where I could barely get seven seconds in that car, but those were very early cars that uh, were taking a serious beating from journalists on the track and on that closed course. This car, ooh, <laughs> it's fast. It definitely feels properly quick. And with that all wheel drive system, it makes it super easy to launch this car. So I'm really satisfied with that run, but let's go ahead and try it right here. I still have the traction control off. It's in sport mode. Let's see what we can get. All right, 5.76 seconds here, and this is with it more going slightly uphill, but heck, I'm impressed. I was able to get the 4.9 second that Toyota claims with this car and it does require a little bit of an aggressive clutch dump. So if you if you own this car, ugh, God bless you if you're gonna drive it that way. I mean, it feels like it can take it, um, but I personally wouldn't wanna do it too many times, but heck, because of that all wheel drive system, you can easily do a 4,000 RPM clutch dump, but I wouldn't go any harder than that because before I filmed this, I did try a little bit more of an aggressive 6,000 RPM clutch dump, and I got a warning from the computer saying that the all-wheel drive system was overheating and it was diverting back to two-wheel drive, so I had to drive it around to cool it down a little to get the all-wheel drive system to reactive or reactivate. But oh my God, this car literally will make, or it pulls at my inner 22-year-old. I mean, I wish I was that young, but I'm sadly not anymore. Uh, this car will make Mazda Speed and Subaru WRX STI drivers green with envy. It feels like a combination of what a Mazda Speed 3 or a modern day WRX STI would feel like in a hatch form. I mean, the steering is so sharp and direct and it just transmits, transmits a lot of feedback through those front tires. The chassis of this car feels like it was tuned and built or designed 
by somebody who actually cares about driving. <laughs> this engine pulls all the way to 7,200 RPM and it just feels good. It feels quick. Now in terms of the transmission, I had some issues with the six-speed manual in my first early drive. It has active rev matching. The clutch is on the heavier side and it engages right at the end of the travel. Now that I've had some time to spend with the GR Corolla, I've gotten used to the clutch and the shifter. And this is definitely not as good as what you find in its main rival, the Civic Type R. The Type R has a little bit of a more forgiving clutch and shifter. This car doesn't really enjoy it if you hurry it through the gears. Oh, oh my God, this is fantastic. <laughs> this thing just feels so light. It feels so high energy, high strung. It feels so well damped and so well controlled. I love the seats also. They hold you in place nicely. The active rev matching also works pretty well. These, God, the chassis just begs for more. <laughs> and remember, this isn't even the Morizo edition. The Morizo edition has stickier Cup 2 our compound tires and it's 100 pounds lighter. I drove that briefly on a track and it's basically a track toy right off the showroom floor. This feels a little more uh, acceptable for on-road usage. I mean, it still feels like you could take it to the track easily, but I was surprised. I was expecting this car to feel more stiff and uncomfortable out on the roads. And let me tell you, I've gotten older over the years and the suspension is definitely firm. It's not as firm as the Kona N, the Hyundai Kona N. It feels about the same as the last Elantra N that I drove, a little bit stiffer than perhaps even the Type R. I will say that this three cylinder engine, I don't love the sound of it at times. However, right now on full boil, it definitely, has an interesting note to it. I suspect owners who buy this car are probably going to consider putting a louder exhaust on it. I mean, Toyota definitely is being a little conservative with the noise of this car. It could be louder. I think it is satisfying. It's certainly different than the four cylinders that you hear in the rest of the segment. And I love how the rev matching works really well. Visibility out of this car is, is good. I mean, this thing is easy to drive. It feels small, it feels planted, it feels stiff. <laughs> and that, that all-wheel drive system, it just grips and grips and grips for days. So that's the reason why I would probably end up choosing this over a Type R, because I live in an area where it's a little bit colder, where it's a lot wetter, where we get snow. I would want that all-wheel drive grip. And also this car with its, you know, GR4 all-wheel drive system. This has front and rear limited slip differentials. It has the ability to send up to 70% of the torque to the rear, which is freaking awesome. And you can also adjust it to go 60-40. This is where it gives you more of a front drive bias. And then you can also push it into the center and go to a track mode where it's 50-50 with those locking uh, front and rear diffs, which makes this thing just a joy to drive. Now, I will tell you that the best launch that I got was with this thing in the 30-70 split. When you do it in the 60-40 split, I'll show you the difference really quick here. It actually will torque steer a little bit, which surprised me a lot. See, there's a little bit of tor torque steer there. <laughs> so yes, in daily driving, you probably would be okay in 60-40, but I love driving this thing in 30-70. For me, that's the best balance because it gives you that more rear drive feel uh, with the front drive track with the front traction when you need it during slippery conditions and in terms of the efficiency I was averaging only around 20 mpg in this thing in my weeks for the testing it's only going to get around 220 ish miles on a full tank remember this uses premium gas it has like a 12 gallon gas tank which is why the range is so atrocious but overall oh my god like this car I liked it I liked it when I first drove it, but I, I kept saying I needed more time. Now that I've spent a full week with this car, I can confidently say this is the unexpected extra spicy hot hatch from a brand that you didn't expect. I mean, I expected something like this from Mazda and from Subaru, but the fact that it's a Toyota, it feels well-made. It feels like it can take abuse and extra power when you want it to. And I'm just shocked. I'm very impressed. I didn't expect to like the GR Corolla as much as I do. So after spending a full week with the hottest hatch that Toyota has ever made, I have to admit, this car is pulling at my inner youth 
heartstrings. I mean, this car takes me back to the days when I was in my early 20s or when I just graduated high school because it has the feel of a hot hatch that I expected Subaru or Mazda to build. I mean, spending a week with this car, driving it on the road, the high energy, the high strung nature, the just the driving nirvana that it gives you makes me really smile. And I love the ingredients here. We've got that turbocharged three cylinder that delivers a lot of power, a lot of torque. It has a fairly good sound from the factory. I'm looking forward to seeing what enthusiasts do to make it even louder. The six speed manual is a little bit notchier than I would like. I think Honda does a little bit of a better transmission in the Civic Type R, but for those of you who can get used to it, and it really just takes you a couple of days to get used to the shifter and the clutch, you'll quickly find a lot to like about the shifter. The all wheel drive system in this car also is very impressive. I mean, this is technology that I expect Subaru to do with an STI. And of course they just don't offer an STI with the current generation. Uh, the the interior of this car is probably for me the biggest letdown. It's pretty cramped on the inside here. The back seat is small. The front seats feel small. The screen feels small, though at least it has the newest software and it doesn't really feel quite as high quality uh, and as special feeling as the new Civic Type R. In terms of the handling, this is right up there, of course, with the best from Honda and the best from Volkswagen. The ride quality is surprisingly good given the trackable nature of this vehicle. And really my only gripe with the GR Corolla just happens to be the fact that it is small. I mean, I like a smaller vehicle, but for those of you who plan to use this as your only car, something like the Civic Type R might give you more space. Uh, and more of a comfortable daily driver. Same thing with the Volkswagen Golf R. But the beauty about the GR Corolla is of course the fact that it is super rare. Toyota hasn't disclosed how many of these they're gonna be building for the 2023 model year, but this circuit edition model is only limited to 1500 units here in America. The Marizo is even more rare. They're only gonna be building 200 units for the US for model year 2023. We don't know how many total units they're gonna build of the core, which I suspect is probably gonna be the one that most dealers are gonna carry. But if you can get your hands on this circuit edition model, you're gonna get truly a special Corolla that has all of the necessary features to make it feel like an easier daily driver, but also the performance to put a huge smile on your face and to win some races at those drag lights because zero to 60 in 4.9 seconds is some seriously impressive performance. And because of that all wheel drive system, you'll be smoking all of those Civic Type Rs at the light. Probably not smoking the DSG Golf Rs, but pull up next to a manual Golf R and this thing is going to be quicker based on my internal testing. But with all that said, if you guys are looking to purchase this vehicle, GR Corollas are on sale if you can get your hands on them. They start at $36,900, which is a steep deal for the base version. Now, most of you are probably going to add the performance package and the technology package on the core version. That's gonna put you at around 39 grand with destination. This circuit edition model includes all of that, plus the JBL sound system and the special wheels, uh, the carbon fiber uh, reinforced roof and the leather Alcantara seats, which you cannot get on the core version. This model here with destination comes in at $44,500, I know. 45 grand for a Corolla. However, I'd argue that this cost about the same as the Civic Type R, but it has all wheel drive and it is quicker, of course, because of that all wheel drive system. So you could kind of look at it from that way. The Marizo edition is gonna be the priciest model. That starts at 49.9, which I haven't had a chance to sample that in the real world for extended period of time. Remember, it only has two seats. That's seriously a track ready version. But for me, I believe the circuit edition is that perfect Goldilocks, as long as you're okay with paying nearly mid $40,000 for a Corolla, which doesn't include, by the way, the markups that I'm sure a lot of these dealers are going to be doing because of the rarity of this car. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2023 Toyota GR Corolla and the Circuit Edition trim. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.